Hey, welcome back, sinners. Hopefully that caught your attention. So my guess is 100% of you are sinners. So this this uh, message today is right up your alley, right up my alley. Um, basically looking at scripture, what God calls us to, and this series, Dangerous Prayers, talks to anybody out there that's listening, far from God, close to God, who recognize they're a sinner. So maybe down below you'll comment, hey Jason, I'm a sinner just like you. And I would agree. And I'll like it. So yeah, anyway, anyway, thought that'd be a great introduction today. So let me get straight into it. Psalm, uh, as you read through it, you begin to find out some of these dangerous prayers that a Christian should pray. Uh, when you approach God, uh, they're dangerous because they're, they're personal and they're close, right? And kind of attacks our pride. Like me saying, welcome sinners, right? You probably already offended that I, I said that. So perfect, because scripture is going to do this too. So watch this, Psalm 51, uh, verse 17. My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, God, you will not despise. One of the things God wants us to have when we come to him is a broken spirit. And actually, the, the, the words through there in Hebrew, it talks about this crushing. Like, I, I'm crushed, God. Crushed at the heart, realizing that I am a sinner. Right? Being honest about that, that, that goes after your pride. And so one of these dangerous prayers is, God, would you break me? Would you help me understand the humility I should have and help me even have that? God, give me more humility, right? So that probably makes people a little bit uncomfortable. So one of the things that uh, as we're going through this, this prayer series of dangerous prayers, which we took from uh, a book called Dangerous Prayers, you're probably not going to like this. Possibly, maybe you won't even pray it. It's going to possibly make you not feel good. But the potential to change you, the potential to make you increase your character, um, who you are, and understanding your identity, it's so impactful, exponentially impactful. So I'm going to ask you, pray this prayer of God, would you break me? Help me to have this broken spirit and this contrite heart. So we look at our prayers and it's, it's like this idea, of, do I pray for safety? Do I pray for blessings? Because sometimes those blessings come through not being safe. Do I pray for comfort? Just being comfortable, God? I just want to be comfortable. Or do you want to be close to God? Do you want to become closer to God and, and have that character? Do you want to have an easy faith? Or do you want to have a mature, complete, whole faith? Do you want to be shallow in your spirituality? Or do you want to have depth? All those, those second items that I described, those come from by, by being humble, by having a broken and contrite spirit. So here's a big question for you. Can you give God permission to do a deep work in your life? Would you, listener, will you give God permission to do a deep, hard work in your life? Here's the beauty of this difficulty. Any difficulty you go through, anything that uh, God may point, point out to you, like last week we talked about, God, search me, know my heart, know, know what causes me to do the things I do. When you do that, you're doing something difficult. And anytime you do something difficult, it's going to bring about, bring about closeness, a connection. It's going to deepen your trust and your faith, hopefully specifically with God. But this also happens normally in human relationships, doesn't it? You go through something difficult. You have this big memory. You know, it could be a car wreck. It could be um, a tragedy. But those people around you that you share the hardship with, you get close. Trust is developed through that. And so you're actually, through this prayer, going to naturally develop a closeness with God. One that you never could accomplish by being easy, by being comfortable. And so God's going to call you to something deeper, something better. 
But here's here's part of the the thing I think uh, the difficulty the dangerousness in this prayer is we tend to impress people with our strengths like look how strong I am look what I could do you know I'm keeping it all together life's just going hunky dory look look at the life I've built but we will always connect with people and with God through our weaknesses and man we we just hate being weak. Hate, hate to, to even think that my spirit is broken. Like I have a contrite spirit. Like that is like we don't want to go there. And yet God says, this is where I want you to be. Even Psalm chapter 34, verse 18. The Lord, God, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. It's almost like God's favorite people are the ones who are extremely humble. They recognize, man, I'm a sinner. I am messed up. I need God. And that's where God steps in. And I even think about my own boys, you know, and growing up and they're, they're getting to where they're growing up, leaving the house. Some of my best favorite times with them is when they messed up. Is when things did not go right. Is where we shed some tears together some heartache, maybe even some spankings, right? Those are times where we grew close. They understood discipline. They understood my deep love for them. But if everything were easy, I wouldn't have those memories to share with them. Those those times of growth. And so I'm kind of glad bad things happened to them so that we could experience and our relationship could grow deeper. But our prayers tend to be, God, keep me safe. I don't want any distractions. I don't want to be bothered. I just want to have this hunky-dory life. Yet God looks at life and is like, no, these are some of my favorite times with you. Where you are broken. Where I can come in and save you. It is such a dangerous prayer. So, uh, it's a, I, all the time I hear of people going through uh, hardships. And they'll say things like, This is the worst thing that has ever happened to me, and yet the closest to God I've ever been. So people have gone through awful, 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 terrible things, the worst thing they could possibly go through, and yet, interestingly, their faith, their closeness to God, it just goes exponential. I mean, it's so deep in those times of trouble. So we see God at work in these times where you and I have a broken spirit, and a contrite heart. And I want you to hear, God never wastes a hurt. In fact, those are the times he wants to really come in and, and be close to you. Romans 8, 28, those who are Christian, he says, and we know, we as Christians, we know that in all things, good or bad, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Like pray this prayer. Right? Pray this. God, I need a broken spirit, a contrite heart. Because I want to know, I want to experience, I want to grow close to you. I want to be in a spot where I can be with you, protected by you, fathered by you. And so here we are. Any difficulty that you may come, you have two options when that difficulty, that hardship comes, when brokenness comes. And you have probably chose one of these two directions. When a bad thing happens to you, you can run from God. You can blame God for that. Or the beautiful response is you could run toward God. I think that's where God, he capitalizes on this garbage in our life. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him. The the gospel, the good news of Jesus, is an invitation Here it is. The invitation is, would you come to Jesus and die? A broken spirit, a contrite heart. Would you come realizing you don't have it all together? You need him to step in, to be broke, to acknowledge that God is good. So there's this interesting thing, uh, not in our culture, But in Japan, they have this art called Kintsugi. And Kintsugi is the art of when you have this expensive vase or expensive bowl 
even think of like uh, the Chinese Ming Dynasty and their very fancy vases, right? Sometimes those fall and get broke, especially if you got three teenage boys running around your house. So the art of Kintsugi is to repair that. And in Kintsugi, they will take this porcelain and they will repair it and then lace it with gold. And so they look at brokenness as a sign of beauty. We tend to look at brokenness as a sign of weakness. And one of their favorite things, their most treasured possessions, are the broken items that they may have in their house. I think God looks at us that way. This art of kintsugi, the, the brokenness in us, he sees as a potential beauty. A, a time where you and he drew close. Your faith deepened in him. You grew to trust him more. And I really believe that's what God wants to do. And my prayer for you is that you want that same thing. God, I want to draw close. And if that requires brokenness, if that requires a contrite heart, give it to me. I'm a sinner. I need you. So this morning, um, I, I really believe us coming to this, this point, it's dangerous. But this point of a dangerous prayer, God, would you do a big work in me of humility so I can draw close to you. To be, to be right. So let me pray for you. God, my prayer is that everyone out here listening would pray this prayer from Psalm 51, Psalm 34. God, would you break me? Help me be in this position where I know I need you. Like to restore that relationship. And God, we know, we, we trust you. I've seen it work time and time again. We know that in all things, you'll bring this to good. So God, break us. Your will be done. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us this week. I do want to say first Sunday in October, our church family is getting together and we're going to invite you uh, to our chili supper. We'll be out at the city park. We'd love for you to come hang out with our church people. Uh, we just have hay rides, beanbag toss, all kinds. We just have a good time out at the city park. We'd love to have you. Uh, there's information on our website. We'd love to have you come join. Just get to know some people. So you're invited, right? Have a great week. <laughs>